everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. Larry, we find ourselves right in the center of the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex in Arlington and AT&T Stadium. Today, it's week four, and we've got what should be a great one here between the New Orleans Saints and the Dallas Cowboys. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. for Ezekiel Elliott. And they showed a little athletic juke, but then the daylight quickly closed. There we go. Nice play, baby. See if they stay on the ground for second down. They go to Elliott again. Not much room here as he only gets it to about the 30. Just a couple on the pick up there, and now it's third down. Third play here, this opening drive as they're up against a third and five. From the gun on third down, Romo. And that's caught by Beasley. And he's taken down at the 43, but now before picking up the first. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. And that run was what a lot of people call an explosive run. Gave them good yardage, solid yardage. They feel good about the whole thing, and they did it behind a two tight end set. It's always interesting to watch what offenses want to do with the two tight ends. Sometimes they line them up together for a power set. Sometimes they put one on each side of the line scrimmage to balance things out. No matter what, though, when you see two tight ends on the field, your first thought is to think of run. In this case, the offense was able to run successfully. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A one-two combination. Look pretty good. How about that? Let's see if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. Now it's Romo. This one complete. It's C.J. Fedorowicz. It'll be a gain of nine, and that'll make it second and short. Complain now. Let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? And what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. They get six on the pick up there as the drive will continue. Well, we saw the practice film this week. They wanted to focus on these intermediate passing plays, and it paid off there. And they took that focus not just to the practice field, but in the film room to show the guys exactly what they wanted, what types of looks they should expect to get, and how they would beat those coverages each and every time, and it paid off on that play. It's a gain of five on the play, and that'll make it second down. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. Right, I'm going to show my age here a little bit. We used to talk about running backs catching the ball as safety valves. Nowadays, they're a big part of the passing offense. Quit acting like you're so old. You're only 65. <laughs> It'll only be a gain of a yard, and it sets up a third down and four now. Play number nine now on this pretty long opening drive, but this is third down. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll. And Dez has got it. Dez Bryant for the Cowboy touchdown. Dez Bryant, his first touchdown on the year. And the Cowboys take it all the way down the field and score on the opening drive. And it was a tight window. He knew he had to rocket that thing in there. He got it done. And when you're able to complete one like that, your confidence has to just go sky high. You just mentioned it. Tight window. Zings it in there despite excellent coverage. Result, touchdown. Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. This is taken at the three. And he'll take this one near the 25. Call it the 26-yard line.
Throwing on first down is Breeze. He's got the connection over the middle to Diggs. And he's brought down. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves the chains. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Now it's second and seven. Play action to Spiller. Now Breeze. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he's brought down after a good gain. And a nice gain of 21 yards. In recent years, the slot receivers really gained stature in the NFL because they could do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver, but to have that kind of courage and toughness to run routes in the middle of the field and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks and move the sticks, those guys are worth their weight in gold. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Traffic and that's complete. And he's brought down. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. It's Saints football to begin quarter number two. And they're on the move here. They've got it first and ten. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's going to take this down to about the 17. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave him with a second and two. This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. It's a really nice 15-yard pickup, and now it's first and goal. I thought guys that were over 30 weren't supposed to run the football this well in the National Football League. How about that veteran leadership? A big-time run combined with some nice blocking by his offensive line. Showing that the ins and outs of being a veteran still has his place in this league. His odometer is not totally turned over yet. Now it looks like we'll get a timeout as there's a Saints player down here on the field. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. And the eighth play on this drive coming up. From the four, it's second and goal. And he'll get it down close to the goal line, but not quite in. They get three yards closer, but still work to do. It's third and goal. They're knocking on the door as they come to the line here on third and goal from the one. He's going to sneak it. And he is in for the score. Touchdown, New Orleans. Drew Brees, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Saints are within an extra point of tying this thing up. So he's able to sneak it in and credit to the guys up front. Oh, without a doubt, because they have the leverage on this play. We always talk about low man wins and one-on-one -on -one battles. That's exactly what happened there. Their, their offensive line lower than the defensive front. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. 
And out now come the Cowboys. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. They fake the give to Elliott. Now Romo. And Beasley with it over the middle. 17 yards on the pickup there. The drive will continue. It's a first down. Love the call by the offensive coordinator. Recognizing the situation very well. Calling for the play action pass and completing it. One man in the backfield, Elliott. And he'll get it up the middle. And he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down. You're set up very well for the rest of the drive. On second down, here's Romo. And on the left side, Fedorowicz has it. Touchdown, Cowboys! C.J. Fedorowicz, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Cowboys are in for six. I know guys who design defenses, they try to prepare for everything. But you ignore the guy who plays tight end at your own peril. Yeah, and he's like having another wide receiver out there sometimes, right? Exactly right, because they're such a matchup nightmare, and they're hybrid guys. Are they receivers? Are they big guys that block? How about the one we just saw there? Catch it and go. Run after catch all the way into the end zone. The Saints offense now. They get ready to head back onto the field. And they're hoping to capture some of that magic they had last time out when they were able to put together a scoring drive. But they're still down here, Charles. Not the major concern, though, because of what you talked about. They scored the last time out. They feel good about themselves. They feel like their game plan is now in effect. They know how to attack and what plays they want to put together. But they've got to keep it moving in the right direction because, as you did note, they are down on the scoreboard. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Well, that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out-leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. Second down. The left side caught by Diggs. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. A nice pick up there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone, or... Better against man, because now you're running away from someone, and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. And he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. A gain of three, second down. I think we know by now that every run is not going to be broken and get all the way to the end zone. But these short ones still have their value. You can still set up your play action and throw the football. You control the clock because you have the ball and they don't. And often the physicality sets the tempo for the game. On play action, now Breeze. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. It's a tried and true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. Now Breeze on third down. And Diggs has it. And he's got enough for the first across midfield to the 48. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. 
Face mask penalty, and Charles, you were a defender. You know sometimes in the heat of the moment, it's hard to keep your hands away from that face mask. Sometimes you just get out of position as a defender when you're trying to make a tackle, so you end up flailing away, and your hand gets into the wrong spot. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. It looked like they had something there, but I think that he was thinking about running with the football before he actually hauled it in, and that led to a big drop. Here we go. Breeze will try again on second down. It's complete to Diggs. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. Six yards on the pickup, and that'll lead here to a third down. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. He's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. So now on fourth down, Sean Payton's going to turn it over to the field goal unit. This from 44 yards out, left hash. A minute 59 to go in the first half. We're back to Arlington right after this timeout. A reminder that coming up at halftime, we'll join Larry Ridley in Orlando. He'll have highlights and analysis of this first half of play. So we look forward to that. And I'm looking forward to some air conditioning. I bet you are. Seven yards on the play, and it'll be second down. And the offense still has a couple plays to go to pick up the first on second down and three. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. Here's Romo now on second down. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. C.J. Fedorowicz, the intended receiver, and it's third and short. Romo on third down. He's got a man. It's Williams. Terrence Williams. Touchdown, Cowboys. His second touchdown on the season. And the Cowboys will add on to their lead. And on that one, able to catch it. Also able to have the wherewithal to take it in for the score. And how about the phases of a successful catch and a completion of a play? Look the ball in, secure the catch, and then, of course, the run after the catch that ends up in the end zone. And here comes Diggs. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. Now the Saints, they trot their offense out here. And they had compiled a pretty long drive last time. Unfortunately, though, it ended with no points after the missed field goal. And that can hurt the psyche of the team because as they drove downfield, you know you're never supposed to count points in your mind until they go up on the board. Well, let's face it, we've been there, we've seen teams before. They were counting on those points. They didn't get them. Can they come back now? Find it out. Call it a gain of five. And that'll make this a second down. And they're going to speed things up here. Now Breeze throwing on second down. And a quick throw here, that's complete. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. Throwing on first down is Breeze. The left side caught by Diggs. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. Second down now after the pass completion. Here we go. 
Play action. Breeze. Now that'll be tipped and intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And he'll get this one out to the 50 to the midfield strike. Well, there definitely was some juice on that pass. And while tight ends don't always have the same reputation for hands as wide receivers do, in this case, that ball was expected to be caught. Romo. And he's got it. Over the middle. Fedorowicz. Touchdown, Cowboys. C.J. Fedorowicz with his second touchdown of the game, fourth of the year. And the Cowboys will extend their lead. I heard a coach talk about those late-in-the-half scores, especially ones that give your team a pretty decent cushion. He said those could be the ones that could finish off the squad if you let them. Yeah, they've got the cushion. This half has been theirs. Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. And here comes Diggs. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. is the Saints offense now as they get ready to take over here. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. And when all else fails as a defender, when you're not there in the coverage, your best friend is exactly what we saw there. A big play shot taken by the offense. Unfortunately, it ended in a big drop. Breeze again here on second and ten. Escaping the pressure right. Into a double team and it's intercepted. Picked off by Orlando Scandrick. And now off to the races down the right side. And he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Cowboy defense has a touchdown. Now that was a beautiful play. A pick six. You punctuate something like that, partner. What do you mean with an exclamation mark? Exclamation mark, a big word. What would you do with that? Ampersand? I like it. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. This will be taken very short. And this will get out of bounds. No worries there, though. That still goes as a touchback. Try again after the pick six. He's going to rifle one deep left side. And that is incomplete. So we've come to halftime after a very... And never mind, Larry. These two teams apparently anxious to get back at it. So both teams have their marching orders and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. And here comes Diggs. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Out come the Saints now. They'll go on offense first here to begin the third quarter. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never wanted to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But this is a do that? I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down. Down run and it's second and four. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. Second down following the run. Breeze to throw on second down. He's got the connection over the middle to Diggs. Now it looks like we'll get a timeout as there's a Saints player down here on the field. Well, he gets attended to. We'll step aside.
Fresh set of downs here. On first down, Breeze. And it's complete to Mitchell. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. Call it a three-yard gain, and it'll bring up a second down. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out what... This is caught inside the 15, and that one results in 35 yards. A great job pulling that one in from a guy, as we know, who can really blaze. He's got a lot of speed. And that speed can work for him so many different ways. Sometimes he just takes off and goes and just runs past people. Sometimes you get people to back up. Diving for the end zone, and the ball's knocked out. It's picked up by the Cowboys. I mean, uh, off the red zone, right, from the 20th yard line going in that scoring zone getting points on the board a lot of teams call from the 10 yard line in the green zone that's your money zone he fumbles the ball inside the money zone you have one job take care of the ball that didn't happen and he is going to lose yardage here a loss of a full three yards and now it's second down Hey, a lot of points have been scored in this game, but what a nice play by the defense. Stepping up on that one, maybe they'll get things going in their direction after a play like that. They'll come out in the pistol. Again, it's Elliott. And he'll get this one across the 20, but only up to about the 21. It's a gain of maybe three, but it's going to leave him with still about eight or nine to go on third down. Tough day. Tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. Romo surveying the field. He's going to float this one deep right side. And that's caught inside the 35. A big play here for Dallas. 51 yards. And now a first down following that long game. Well, we know he's got the speed there. He needed the speed and the hands. A great catch. And because of that speed, you have to respect it as a defender. So you have to either play off or make sure you're somehow in contact with him. And he's able to do exactly what you said. Use the speed to his advantage and go up and get the football. That's a big-time play right there. On second down, here's Romo. They'll set up the screen to Elliott. And he's going to be out of bounds down inside the 20. That one good for 12 yards. And that's going to make it third down and less than a yard. And the defense with their backs against the wall a little bit here as the offense is in the red zone. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. And following that penalty, the offense really backed up now on third down. From the gun on third down, Romo toward the sideline. Did he keep the feet in? Yes, he got says the side judge and that's good enough for a first down so here the men in charge are going to be looking at whether or not the receiver had possession of the ball as he went out of bounds and they have to make sure that the receiver got both feet down in bounds as well Challenged the play, it did not pay off. And that means he lost a timeout in that challenge. And as a coach, you hate that. Don't know if you took the advice of the player, you threw it yourself, but it didn't go your way. At the end of the day, it all comes back to the head coach. He has the final determination on whether to actually challenge the play or not. In this case, it didn't pay off for him. And that's got to be so heartbreaking. You throw that flag, you probably feel really confident, and then all of a sudden, boom, you lose the challenge. 
Yeah, when you take a look at it, you're throwing that flag because you believe you're going to be right. And when it comes back the other way, you have to regroup. Call it no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. So nothing there, but maybe you blame that on the blocking. Yeah, at some point, you've got to win at the point of attack. And on that play, that was all the defense. They made it happen. Get ready. Throwing on third down, Romo, and this is going to be incomplete. He was trying to get it to Ezekiel Elliott, and that brings up fourth down. So now on fourth down, Romo off, Bailey on for the field goal try. Now they've got to be a little frustrated here to not complete that on third down after having such a long drive going. Now you're talking about going over 70 yards on the drive. Yeah, did you say a little frustrated? <laughs> very frustrated. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Very frustrated, there's no doubt about it. They thought they were going to have a chance to cash in in the end zone. Now it looks like it's likely a field goal attempt. So put another three on the board. And all things considered, a good opening drive here to begin the third quarter. It sure was. I think as a head coach, you're happy to come out and put a little drive together, take the three points, and build on your lead. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And so close to hitting pay dirt last time. Fumbling down near the goal line. Now, how does that affect their psyche this time around? It's a tester, that's for sure, because to be that close and come up with no points is really disappointing, not just for the guys on offense, but the defensive players, too, who thought, hey, we can put some points up and have a little momentum going. they got to find a way to just get it out of their minds, yeah. let it Short go, -term memory. and move on to the next series. Now Breeze, and he drops it incomplete, and their struggles continue here. Looked like they had an opportunity for a big play across the middle, but he didn't have the concentration or the focus necessary and dropped it before he could haul it in. And defensively, it's a nickel formation here on third down and nine. Now Breeze. It's caught. Mitchell. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. This one now in their own territory, a gutsy call. They're going to go for this on fourth and a yard. Ready. Oh, the keeper, it's Breeze. It'll be a pickup of only a yard, and they're able to pick up the conversion here on fourth down. I tell you, on fourth and one, when you're way back on your side of the field, I thought this might just be an attempt to draw them off and get the first down that way. But they were going for it the whole time, and they wind up getting it. Now this time, Breeze will throw. Looking left side, it's complete. He's got it. It'll be a gain of six, and it'll be a second down. And now they're in the hurry up. Ready. Breeze to throw on second down. And it's complete to Mitchell. It'll be a pickup of just two, and it'll be third down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Back now here on EA Sports. And this is a blowout so far as we get set for the fourth quarter. A very one-sided affair. Breeze looking to throw on third and two. Throwing left side here and it's complete. Just a gain of a couple, but good enough to keep the drive rolling. Did you see that route the way that I did? I yep. thought he was trying to get deep Yeah, that first. wasn't the first option. No, not to, he came off of that guy, the deep guy, and came underneath on the drag, completed it very well. Then the offense lining up first and ten. On first and ten, here's Breeze. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to get this one down to the 45. And give him about four on the play, but he's marked short, so it'll be third and about the length of the football. If you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? 
leverage, athleticism. They created some nice space for him. It's a gain of just a couple there, but it's enough to get him the first. I don't know about you, but I like this call. Third and inches, and instead of worrying about getting it back to a running back and maybe there's some penetration from the defensive front, just go ahead and take it, move forward, and pick up the first down. And as we say often, it shows confidence in your offensive line. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Picked off by Brandon Carr. And they are going to set up shop at the 40-yard line. One man on the backfield, Elliott. He's going to get the football. And he's going to cut it back left here. Touchdown, Cowboys! Ezekiel Elliott, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Cowboys continue to pour it on. And now we've hit that stage of the game, partner, where one of our predecessors, one of the great commentators of all time, he's to sing in this situation when this game appeared to be over. <laughs> I know the fat lady's been singing for some no, time. No, 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 not her at all. This but one of she's our guys. singing too. No, she's singing. She, yeah, she's at she's least, on like the fifth tune. At yeah, this point. She, she left scales way behind. But he's to sing something about turning out the lights. The party was over. Now the Saints get set to trot out there. And three interceptions in this game. I would have to think. I wasn't a quarterback, but number four is kind of, oh, you're like, oh, man, I can't throw four. No, what's interesting is what do the coaches decide to do now? Having thrown three, do you alter your offensive strategy? Do you take the ball out of his hands and maybe turn to the running game? Or do you have that supreme confidence that he's going to turn things around? <laughs> we'll see what they do. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage, look defensively. That looked like a pretty good route combination there because you've got to find a way to clear the guy running the drag because when you do, you just put the ball on him and then let him run. Yeah, he's got some space. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. It's a nice completion, a little bit of run after catch as well to create the yardage that they got. But it is so tough to cover that route, the drag route, because they run it at varying speeds because the key is to create hesitancy on the defender's part. Always so empathetic for those DBs, aren't you? Give him three on the play, and it's a second down. They'll come out in the pistol. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And down he goes. A sack. They sack him back across midfield at about the 48-yard line. And they'll add a DB in the secondary here on third and 14. Looking to throw. Under pressure, they got him again. Tyrone Crawford. He's the one to get him this time. And back-to-back -back sacks are going to bring up a fourth down. Here's Thomas Morstead now. And surprisingly, this is the first punt of the game for either team. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. Ezekiel Elliott gets ready to go again here on offense as he shuffles onto the field. And these numbers showing up on the screen, that's why he's their star. They kept him down for a little bit, couldn't keep him down for a full fourth quarter. But what they were hoping for was a half of a game. And if they could have shut it down at the half, they had done their job. But as you mentioned, a full four quarters and the best... They always feel like they're one run away from changing the momentum or breaking something big. And we're starting to see that here in the second half. They keep on the ground with Elliott. And very little room to maneuver. He'll get this down to about the 39. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. Yeah, another good run there. He's been such a big part of their success here this afternoon. And that last carry, 
It puts him over 100 yards now for the day. Time for a break. We'll come back and wrap up garbage time after this. One man in the backfield, Elliott, and he'll get it up the middle. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 45. Four yards on the pickup there as it'll leave him with a third and about four more for a first. We always like to talk about defense in terms of levels. First level defensive line, second level linebackers, third level defensive backs. And that run, that was what we call a first level run, and it was stopped by a second level player. Now it looks like we'll get a timeout as there's a Saints player down here on the field. While the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. The D can only stop it one more time as they take the knee. So now 11 yards to go for this offensive unit. It's second down. They go back to Elliott. He's been busy. And he'll get across midfield and down to the 48-yard line. Four yards on the pickup there. Now they're left with a third and eight. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big 